Donatello also creates this sculpture of Saint George, also at Or Saint Michel. And here, the saintly knight stands proud with his shield. There were at one time a sword and helmet made of bronze, and you might sit there and look at it and go, well, why would there be a different material? But that's coming from the Greeks and Romans as well. They used to frequently create relief sculpture or sculpture in the round and then add elements. So the sculpture might be marble, but the elements that they add, the details, might be bronze or other metals. So this is again hearkening back to the classical tradition. Now, this is in the tradition of the use of warrior saints in medieval churches. Very, very common. In fact, here we see St. Theodore and St. George at Chartres Cathedral. Now, directly below our friend St. George is going to be this sculpture of St. George and the dragon. And this was commissioned two years after the sculpture was installed. It's actually really interesting for one particular element. It's an early attempt to add atmospheric perspective in sculpture. It's not something that we tend to see. Now, atmospheric perspective is the effect you get when you walk, a, when you're far away, sorry, when far away objects take on sort of an atmospheric haze. Think of when you're on the freeway and you're driving along and the hills in the distance are light blue and then they get a little darker blue and then they're kind of light green and then they get uh, darker green and then you can see branches and squirrels and you realize you're driving up a hill. Same idea. Here, what he's done to add atmospheric perspective, and I'm going to have to pull up my pen to do this, is you'll notice things in the distant background are just barely etched in like this tree right here or the mountains and hills in the background, whereas things in the foreground, for example, our damsel in distress, the horse, the dragon, etc., are much closer. And even the horse, the head is moving away from us. The rear end is sort of towards us, so it's angled, falling back into the picture plane. The head is less detailed, whereas the horse's butt or rear quarters are far more in far higher relief than the rest of it. And this adds an incredible sense of depth to the sculpture. It gives us a sense of something that is incredibly realistic because it's adding an element, atmospheric perspective, that we don't typically see in sculpture. But Donatello won't be the only one to do this. In fact, we're going to see it again.